Well, welcome to the Friday edition of Richardson Plano Networking. Uh, and today we are pleased to uh, have in our as our speaker, Dr. Francis Mbunya. Did I say that correctly, sir? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, and he's going to talk about his book, Nine Steps to a Profitable Book. He's written multiple books himself, and he gives the guides the audience on how to get started and get finished, important, and make money with your new book. I mean, I know there's lots of people who have written books and unfortunately never make money with them. Dr. Francis Mbunya is an award-winning CEO and the founder of Adva Business Consulting. He holds a doctoral degree in development studies and is the author of the best-selling book, Skyrocket Your Business at Zero Cost. Notice that, a best-selling book. Um, his professional background cuts across business development, project management, and leadership development. Since 2007, Dr. Francis has been helping business leaders, young professionals, and individuals bridge the gap of financial limitations in business development. He is an international speaker and has held senior leadership roles in both the nonprofit and profit sectors across Africa, Europe, and the United States. He has won awards and recognition from some of the world's top institutions, including the United Nations and the National Geographic Society through his work and impact in community development. Dr. Francis has great passion in helping young professionals create a successful career path by sharing lessons learned from his career path and how he was able to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Francis Mbunya. Thank you very much, uh, Randy, for that introduction. And um, originally a bit about myself from Cameroon, Central Africa, where I started off uh, in the early uh, 2006 and out volunteering. And it's also one of those moments where we, we, we look at opportunities, whether to go for our dreams or to go for a perfect job. And I remember my, my family wanted me to be a teacher, go get a job with the government. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. I want to volunteer. And I started volunteering for this nonprofit and that for many dollars, it was in a paid position, a volunteer position, but through that I was able to start traveling within Africa. My first trip ever was in 2008 in Uganda. A later on that took me to Europe where I had some time in Belgium studying and working. I had to also travel around in the Asia. And that was when I had opportunity to meet some great people. And through uh, some of my books, I had the opportunity to present in one of the UN conference where I later did some consultancy on project with them and with the National Geographic as well, working on a lot of projects. But today, I'm, I will not be talking about my journey today. I want to focus on writing a profitable book. And if you permit me to share my screen, I'm just going to bring that up so that we kind of get visual on some of the stuff I'll be talking about. So I'll try to just go a bit slowly so that we can be able to catch what I'm saying. And with a profitable book, um, when I was about to write my feed book, I really wanted to go all out and help people with what I've learned. And before that book, I really wanted it to be a great and a best-selling book. And I've been working on it for about three years until I met uh, my coach, Dr. Angela. And uh, I told her about a book. I saw, I came across one of her ad on YouTube and I say, I'm about to write a book. This is the title. I've been working on it. I want it to be a best-selling book. I want it to be a great book. And she said, Daryl Francis, if you write that book, I'm not going to buy it. It was kind of devastating. I've been working on this book for over three years and uh, you tell me you're not going to buy it. But that turned out to be one of the greatest advice I've had because when she gave me the reason why she wouldn't buy it, she said, hey, you are kind of in the early state of your career. If someone like uh, Tony Robbins write a book on getting off your comfort zone, everybody would buy it because there's a mass price. Write that book. Uh, that's a book which if someone want to buy it, they want to look at your track record, right? So why don't you write something that you'll be able to prove or uh, 
your experience with working with the UN, working with communities, and then you can put that out as a means to connect you to the people that need your service. In this case, you definitely don't need everybody to buy that book. You need probably about 20 people. That we not only need your book, but we need your services. And that is what really got me off. And I, I wrote uh, the book, Skyrocket Your Business at Zero Cost. And it's published by, oh, sorry about that. It's published by Morgan James, and it's kind of available in all the local stores. And that book kind of gives a bigger picture on why we really struggle a lot in business and give my journey how I work with uh, uh, the UN in the center of Africa, working with the poorest community, they had nothing. And when we get these people, what people value, what do you have that we can be able to translate it into money? And these are already opportunities that any other business, they have, they have values which you could turn them to money. But most often we focusing on on the capital aspect of business, and we do not pay a lot of attention on value. But then, and uh, before then, I think I, I spoke with uh, uh, with a group with Dave before, and I, I did a lot on uh, business growth strategy. But today, I want to focus on writing a profitable book. It's still a business growth strategy, and it's one of the strategy of business growth at zero cost. So when I wrote this book, A Million Dollar Auto Pad, it's because when I wrote the book, Skyrocket Your Business is Zero Cost, I was able to leave my corporate job, start my own company, and it did really well. And this is the second one, the Auto Pad Academy, where I just teach people on how they can use the same process I use to be able to get their business to the next level. Now, today I want to focus on three main aspects. Number one, how can a book generate 10,000 and above in a year, in a month, not in a year, in a month? How can you write a book that is capable of generating 10,000 and above in a month? Secondly, how can you do that in 90 days? How can you write and publish in 90 days? And thirdly, I'll share about what uh, we do at the author's part, the approach and how we help people really get around this. It's important to know that we have 3% success for 91% of people that want to write a book. So out of 91% of the people that aspire to write a book, only three are the write and the publish. But then, what actually is the difference? The difference is because we keep doing it the traditional way, and because we keep doing it the traditional way, we notice it's changing. And what finish and other people don't finish. Everybody have the same excuse. We don't have time to write, we all have a busy schedule, but some people really have busy schedules, but they're able to write tons of book, while others do not really have that much busy schedule, but they're still not able to finish. What is the difference? We'll be looking at that. But let's look at the importance of writing a profitable book. What is, why is it important? What, how can it help you in order to move to the next level? I'm focusing here specifically for businesses because I focus on the business aspect of writing. Number one, it helps you to easily attract more prospective clients. We're gonna look at that in, in a moment. And secondly, you can be able to make a lot of money just by writing a profitable book by getting it into the right hands. We'll look at that as well. It helps to build credibility and thought leadership by focusing on a specific subject, writing about it pretty on what it takes to walk around that area. And it also helps prospects to make faster decisions to work with you. For instance, if you have been opportunity to read my book, um, A Million Dollar Auto Pack, you'll be able to understand why it is easier to finish a book in 90 days. And that will give you like more reason why you should talk to me or why you should not talk to me. And then it increases your visibility and following just because you have a book or uh, you're present on Amazon, people can uh, be able to get uh, to know you just by reading your book. And it also show others that this is possible. You can, anyone else can do it. So there are many reasons. And this is just a uh, Dr. Angela, which I happened to meet her, she works with the author incubator. It's uh, the author training academy in Washington, DC. And she does like a great job of showing you how you can be able to get beyond the writing process. 
the result that you want even before you write. She called that process, you say before you write, you become a best-selling author before you write. You're able to get what you want before you even start the journey. And we'll be looking into that a bit about me, the book on, uh, on my business. And that's me and my family. We live in Arlington, Texas. I uh, live here with my wife. My first son is eight and uh, second five years old in December. And Frances is three years old. And uh, just me there with uh, the team of Dr. Angelas. All of those people there were authors, but many of them were also business people that were learning how they can use the process to get their business into uh, the next level. And that was a uh, uh, a talk I was doing, in, uh, I did in UK, and that talk was really close to my heart because I did a five minute talk. It was only five minutes, and they had to fly me. By then, it was in 2016. I was in uh, the center, of, I was still working with the UN. I said, Hey, we found your book on the reconciling livelihood and uh, conservation. And we've been looking for a speaker in this area, but our, our schedule is really full, but we wanted to do a spotlight speech. So I did not actually go up to the stage to do the speech. It was about 5,000 people, and I just stood up on my seat. The slide was on the board, and I did a talk for five minutes. And that was like really fascinating because it's kind of very close to my head. And I did a lot of work with youth also in Central Africa, teaching them on how they could go all out there by sending their message, by putting themselves where people can easily find them. And we'll be looking into that. That was um, uh, my doctorate defense. Um, my wife giving me some beautiful flowers there and the doctorate committee. Those are some of the beautiful moments around my career that are really hold close to my heart. But then there's been some changes in the book industry because of COVID. But we, we need to pay close attention to if we're looking into writing a profitable book. And you, we all know that New York is the center of the, 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 the uh, book publishing and coronavirus happened to hit it so hard. So many of the editors and literary agents, actually many of them retired, many of them were of age, many of them retired. And also we, we don't have too many young people that are getting to that fee because the IT and the other fees coming out now, there's a lot of money there. So uh, many people want to go there. So what, what is this effect? What, does, what effect does this have in the publishing industry? And it has a very big effect because books need to get into stores. People need to get their books out there. But we also see that Amazon during the period was affected on book, book delivery because book was the, uh, the book market was not an essential service during that period. So other services needed to be prioritized. A lot of delay in book shipping that affected many authors. And um, Barnes & Noble, which is one of the greatest uh, marketer, most of the uh, stores were short. So it kind of created a shift and a rethinking in the publishing industry. But we also had uh, bookshop.com that took that advantage and got into the book market and uh, take that option to be shipping books to people uh, more faster compared to Barnes and & Noble and, uh, and Amazon. So, and many uh, publishers turning into business advisor and telling people, hey, look, now we can get your book into the store, but we can advise you what more business you can get just by self-publishing or by writing your own book and using it as a lead magnet. Just a bit about some of the books we've been able to publish since the coronavirus uh, uh, period. And, it's just about taking action and making a change. So, so go a bit deeper into what, we, it's not just about writing a book, but the commitment to writing a transformational book, the commitment to taking that book beyond the writing phase and taking action that is going to actually transform the life of the people you wrote that book for. And how do you specifically do this? The first which we're gonna talk about is getting that book, getting the market that you want before even starting to write the book. How do you get the market? The most important aspect of a book is for it to get into enough hands. So before you write, are you sure that your book will get into enough hands of the people that need the information that you're writing about? Now that's the first question. And how do you use this concept to build a great book? Now, if you can look at uh, the, 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 the the, 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 my screen, you will see that there is what we call the five 
five-star book. How can you book rated as a five-star book? It need to have the three components, the market, you need to have the, uh, the potential, and then they need to be a mission. The first thing a lot of people mix when they're writing a book is that they don't pay attention on the market. A market is the offer. Who are you writing this book specifically to? Why do they need the book? Is it handling a real life problem that they are looking for someone to pay them to solve it? Why would someone not prefer to reach a book and hire you? When you're able to understand some of these questions, now you can build what we call a software that someone who is reading your book is not just reading a book, it's installing that software. We are going to use, look at that later, how we use that software development approach to build a profitable book. Finally, the expertise, you want to share on something that you master very well. In that case, you don't just write specific concepts, but you are sharing your journey on how you've been helping people so that the person that is reading that book, it's seen you as someone they can go to for help, not as someone that has just written a good book full of many concepts. And the third, which is the most important thing, is the mission. If you don't have a mission, if you don't have what you want your book to accomplish, you are gonna write that book, get it out there and expect people to magically find it then buy it. And then that is the result you want out of your book. But we're gonna see the difference in the next page. Now, these are two different systems of book writing. This is the traditional method where you write a book and you publish it, you put it on Amazon, or you give it to a traditional publisher and so many people that read the book if you're lucky to be um, michelle obama in 2019 out of uh, about 360 million dollars of book sales almost half of that went to michelle obama on her book becoming michelle obama so if you're lucky to be in the spotlight where people just want to get your book because of the position where you are, this is a good strategy for you. If you build a massive audience that you can be able to market it, you may not really have to bother about uh, uh, the other approach, which uh, we're gonna focus on here. But this approach is for someone, even if you have no background, even if you have no following, this approach help you to be able to build both following and both a market all together. Because you created a book that is an offer and you know specifically who that offer is for, now you know who you are exposing your book to. You're not just put out expecting everybody to come for it, but you're intentional about who you want to reach your book. Let's say, for instance, your job is just to get it into five hands every day then you have done quite a good job because it's getting into the hands of those who do not only need that book, of those who may become readers and become prospect. And because you are talking about something very important, they want to approach you to say, hey, I read your book and I see that you help people with X, Y, Z, and I really need this help. I've been looking for it. Can you help me? And this is how you're able to use your book to gain following and to gain readers to translate those readers into prospects and to translate them into clients. Now, let's look at how profitable that could be. I spoke about the fact that obviously a good book we have about 2,000 readers in a year. And which means that five people are reading that book every day. So you writing a profitable book, your job is to focus on these five people every day that you want to reach them. Your book is out, but you want to be very intentional about it. Every day, I want to get to five new people that look like the people I wrote this book for. And if you get to five people every day, you might do it simply by setting up a Facebook ad that targets specific people. And obviously, it's about $1 per person that is going to visit it. You're going to look at how that can actually still be very profitable if you do that. You can ma manually just reach out to people by talking, by uh, going to conferences, by presenting your book where people need the value and sharing it with them. There are so many ways which you can get 
five, at least five new people average, that's an average. You might not be able to do that every day, but in a week, if you see the 200 people, people that may need your services, that may cover about a month of, of awareness that you have already done. Then out of these 2000 people, 10% will end up not just reading your book, but say, hey, I want to know more. I want to know more about what you're talking about. I need to talk to you. I, want to, I read your book, but I need to talk to you. And out of this 10%, which is 200 from the 2000, 25%, which is 50 people, we end up saying, hey, I don't only want to learn more, I want you to help me accomplish this goal. And let's say that the offer you created in the book was worth $2,000 for someone that actually read the book, understood the concept, like what you do, and decide to work with you. It means that in the front end, you are building a business of $100,000 in a year just by getting that book into five hands. Now, for everybody that you've received good service anywhere, you always want to go back to that person to ask for more. Just like you get a good plumber, you did a good job, and they tell you, hey, I can also do electrical, electrical work. You want to bring them back because they did a good job. You can trust them. So 50% of those who work with us in a very short period are liable to come back and work with us for a longer period, which is like a year of you just mentoring them and walking them through all the studies. And they are liable to spend five times more than what they spend in, in, in this session. They're liable to spend five times. Let's say that 25 of these people that started working with you continue for a longer relationship. That means you're creating a $10,000 more by working with them. And 25 people in the back end, is, uh, we generate $250,000. Uh, $250, so with this approach, you're capable of building a thriving business $50 if you're intentional in what you want to do. But all of this starts from the first process, which is the writing process. Now, let's look at how do you put all of this down? How do you build the software in a way that the person on the other end is not only reading a book, but is reading a software which they definitely want to run it on their system, in their system and get the result? We focus a lot on these three main important parts. Passion, purpose, and potential. No matter how long you, 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 you have an expertise, no matter how talented you are, if you don't find a place of passion in doing what you know how to do best, it, it, it will always seem like this is a job and I want to get off of this job and I want to take a vacation. So we focus a lot on what is the passion, what has informed you, what is that passion that has kept you a long time immediately you find that passion you're able to establish a purpose so when you establish that purpose what brings the purpose to life is your ability to be able to accomplish that purpose so your book is a connection of your passion your purpose and your potential which is why when you go out to do it, people are not listening to your word. People are listening to the emotion. They are listening to the connection that is coming from you. And that is what makes the difference in business. When people listen to you, they don't listen to what you say. They're listening to the passion, the emotion, the energy that is coming from you. And that is how they're capable to make a decision to say, hey, this is someone that understands what they do. And I think I want to trust them with my investment. And now let's look at how, when you understand this first concept, it's time to build your software. The reason why the software company is very, is very productive or is very profitable is because they use a concept called the user, the, user, uh, the, the user story. Before they build everything, they want to know specifically who needs that product, why they need it, how many clicks would they need in order to get it done. If there's a problem, how do we troubleshoot it? So it based on the concept of having the ID reader profile. Instead of having your book target a big group of people, you look for one person that you want to use them as, 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 as an ID reader. So let's say for instance, if my book is addressing uh, my ID reader is for instance, Randy, I want to know exactly 
what is their what is their name what's their job title what where do they live what have they been doing what is the potential problem what is keeping them up at night what can they do now to really be accomplished by moving to their next phase of a career in that case when i'm writing i'm providing a direct answer to what he needs and if i can find him and find someone that has a problem that need a solution all what i need to do is to do a duplication which is what uh, uh, if you're running any ad what they do they look for a specific person then they look for the identical people then they just expand it so if you can find one person then it's possible that there are millions of other such people so when you're able to use one person what happened it seems like when you're writing it's like this person is sitting next to you and you're giving them advice so you imagine if you are stuck in this space what advice can you give them based on your experience if they are stuck at this level what advice can you give them so you write a book that is non-technical but connecting to the heart of the person that read it so the book is more like you're having a face-to-face -face and a to have conversation with them. i call it you're writing a love letter to someone that really need that book and if you're upset if you're writing from a, a place of love when you're upset you say hey i didn't like this this is why i'm i'm writing this this was good so you you write without having to maybe please or having to to, to push too hard and now when you exactly understand their problem your book is a dream come true of what the idea reader wants so if they could tap their hand and their problem just disappear what exactly would that be and now that become your selling point or that become your elevator speech or that become exactly the way you want to appear to talk to someone that makes that book and this is when we say you're writing your book with 100 percent confident that it is going to solve the problem why you're taking your time right you've analyzed the problem you've gone through a couple of questions if this person was really complaining to a friend of a coffee what exactly would they say so you have all those details that now help you to be able to go deeper and to provide a solution that is specifically for the person you're helping and now let's look at the content that's where this is where a lot of people find a lot of problem where's the content how am i going to put all of this together there's a very simple way of doing that number one one of the biggest technique in writing or in creating sustainable result is the fact that when we sit down to want to do something there are many other things that came come in between what we are doing and we don't have enough time to put into that so but the brain has this power to create beyond what we can create beyond what we think this is a typical example if you're getting ready to go to work and you have one hour to get ready let's say you get up at 6 a.m and you're supposed to leave home at 7 a.m and the three major things you have to do take a shower take breakfast get into your car and you're and you're gone and you get up say at 6 45 and you have 15 minutes you will still do all of those activity without leaving any and you will still leave on time what's the difference when your brain notice you have too much time it brings in activities that come in as lack period just to make sure that you spend all of that time and you end up might not even do it when your brain notice that there is not enough time any other thing that doesn't give that result become like a distraction so in creating the content of your book number one you want to make sure that you are only delivering what is important for that person to solve the problem so you need to embark your time now you the person which you develop their profile is sitting next to you and you give yourself a maximum of one hour if i were to tell this person about 100 ideas that will help them what would those ideas be now you want to make sure you put down all of those ideas within the space of one hour so you start writing any story you have come across anything that can help them you want to put it down without thinking about the others without thinking about the uh, uh, the, the language and why it is very important because your brain know that this is an emergency i need to create 100 ideas in less than one hour 
which means I need to focus. So everything that comes into your mind at that period is very useful. Even if at that moment, it might seem like this is not important, it is useful when you start writing, you'll be able now to make the connection why your brain was able to go to that point at that same time. In that, the next stuff is that you put them into categories. You now relax, you can solve them to say, okay, and put them into different categories. Those categories later on will become your chapters, which you can develop them into a step-by-step -step process. But then what is also very important is the style and the approach which the book is written. The impression to write a book, or most especially writing a book that gets into a hand and to the heart of your reader, is not to, in the description and the title, not to tell them exactly what is in the book, but to tell them why they should read that book. So one of the biggest mistakes with, with book uh, titles and book description is that it says what is in the book. So many people sound like, in this book, I give you five techniques on how to do this, and technique number one, and technique number two, and I will say, oh, this looks like something I read yesterday, so I don't think I need this. But what is coming from you is really because of your point of story. So instead of saying directly what is in there, you give them a reason why they should go in there and look at it. And in this scenario, we say, have you been struggling to go do this? Have you been struggling to solve this problem? Myself, I went through that for so many, for so many years, but I finally find a trick or a, a technique that works perfectly well for me. And if you're able to grab a copy of this book, you'll be able to understand why I say this. And so you get the book into your hand. That is the first job you need to do. The second job you want to do is that now the process of getting that book to them, number one, awareness. People don't take action because they're not aware of the result that we get. So the first chapter of your book need to do a good job on giving them the reason why they should take action and how their life will be different or how their business will be different if they take that action. The second chapter go to give more about your credibility on how you've been dealing with that. And the third chapter go to the about the process which you're about to teach them. And any other chapter is just a detail of all of this. But the reason you want to focus a lot on that is because more than 90% of people that buy books don't read beyond the third chapters. They read beyond the third chapter when they found a lot of interest. But if you start reading and it's not what you want, you want to drop it and go for something else. So all of this is kind of built in the chapter summary, the editorial process. Okay, one of the big takeaway, which I also want to give today is the writing process. You might have all of this figured out and you see find now that you're using so much uh, time to finish your book. There's a technique which is called writing in the flow. Writing in the flow helps you to be able to finish your manuscript on time. How does that work? There is what we call the auto major. The auto major is how many words your brain is capable of typing in an hour. So you need to understand how fast you can be productive so that you know exactly the amount of time you need to put in per chapter. Immediately you understand that time at any point where you sit down to write, you want to time yourself and see if you're meeting that limit. If you're not meeting it, it means that you are not writing in the flow. You're being distracted. And when you're distracted and you move away, when you come back, you come with a whole different uh, type of energy. You come with new energy. That's a lot of disruption. So writing in the flow, planning out your chapters, and writing one chapter in one sitting is one of the biggest techniques that is going to help you to finish on record time. So beyond that, talk a bit about uh, what we do at the author's part and how this is for you to finish your book. If you look at uh, these four books, they're kind of my favorite. Most all of them are solving a problem. They're solving a specific problem that is helping specific people. With, with Edwin, he, he's a fitness coach, but he was working as a coach for a gym. And when we come into writing a profitable book, we say, you don't necessarily need to go to the gym to help people. What can you do? You, you work as a full-time uh, uh, project manager. You're still able to stay fit. What is your secret? There are many people that also have this busy schedule and they think, uh, I have a busy schedule. I don't have time to go to the gym. 
So he's able now to teach people how he's able to work to uh, two full-time jobs, stay fit, and then what is the secret? Now he's helping other busy professionals design their own fitness play, design their own fitness uh, technique that they can do from the comfort of their home. He's now having people that he can laptop without having to go out there. The same with all of these people, 19 is a late start. How do you start driving your life from 19 years to a point where you're capable to be fulfilled when you get a career? This is how can you, a mom that has been struggling to uh, have kids after so many miscarriage, you now have kids, but you don't have time to spend with a kid because you need to deal with a nine to five job every day and how she eventually transit from that problem, able to have her own job working from home. So these are kind of the offers that the book go out there to, to get. So the first step, create an offer. The second, match that offer to a marketplace. And the third, create a six figure plan. A planning is very important. How am I going to accomplish this? And all of these, we do it by helping those who work with us, go through all of these, processes align a higher goal which they want to accomplish is it building a business is it uh helping people get 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 more business defining that idea reader replicate building a replicate uh, replicable process you need a process in order to get all of this into reality a success plan and a program design all of that we uh help people to meet up with now the, the, this is a couple of uh, uh different programs we, had at the, we have at the auto spot. One of which is we have all of this uh, teaching on one level to another, one step to another recorded, which you can assess and do it on your own. We also do three hours workshop periodically where we work with your idea, take it from an idea to a book topic and lay a plan for you on how to finish. But we also work with people that really want to do it within nine days. So we focus on the accountability, we focus on getting you all your step up, and we focus also on creating the program and the offer that come exactly with it. And one of the best way to get to me is just through a text. If you send a text, it's the easiest way to get to me, but you can also get to me on, on an email, on the, the website. You can have also many resources, many blogs that could help you to do it on your own. And also on YouTube, every Monday, I do a, a teaching called the, the, the a book writing studio, where I answer specific questions of the people I'm interacting with, some of the challenges they're having with book writing and all of that. So, that was it for today and uh, hoping I finish on record time. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I think if some room for questioning or so. Yes, if anybody has a question, just uh, thank you for it. Let's give Francis a hand, okay. Congratulations, that was good. You did it in record time. You were, you were, you were plowing through that, but that's an incredible amount of information and, and very, uh, very good. So, um, and for those that maybe had trouble keeping up with the speed, um, we definitely, it will be recorded. It will be out on the Facebook group. And so we will be, um, uh, you can go back and revisit his information. Uh, it's a great, the offer was there. Um, so I'm going to, I see a few mics open. Let me go to uh, Dick Buck. You came open first. Okay. Uh, my question is, Talk to me about the length of a book, the minimum, the maximum, the ideal, whatever, you know, you think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, if you're writing a transformational book, a book that you really want to help people, the, the advisable length per chapter is up to 5,000 words. But averagely, we go with 3,000 words. And the reason you want to keep it that then is because you don't want to make reading the book a whole job for the person that need help. You want to put just what is very uh, valuable. So I spoke about the auto module. For instance, if you're capable of typing, say, 2,000 words in an hour, it means that the perfect time for you to write a chapter and get it done is two hours, 30 minutes. 
So if within two hours, 30 minutes, you're not done, it's an indication that you're probably putting information that's uh, not really relevant. And when you write in a flow, it also helps you to know exactly when those ideas per a particular topic or a particular chapter are done. And just to add on that, each chapter go with a purpose. You start every chapter with a, with a purpose statement. What do I want this chapter? So when you're writing that chapter, you're basically answering that question and, and verifying to see if it's really, really focused on delivering an answer to the, to the purpose of the chapter. Great. Randy? Well, first of all, Dr. Francis, thank you very much. That was, uh, uh, unfortunately, we, you broke up a few times, but that's uh, sort of just comes with the, the, this technology, but I think I got the gist. I tried to take notes as fast as I possibly could. Uh, I was able to download your book from Amazon for $4.99, and I've got that. That'll be my weekend reading. Uh, and so the question that I have is, um, I, I really get the concept, and I wish I had heard this speech six months ago because I've been helping somebody with a book, but not yeah. from the perspective of you. They've already got their process, and I'm re reading it and asking a lot of the kinds of questions that you bring out and helping them redirect it. Do you, when you help somebody, do you suggest that they outline the entire book or do uh, as, as we used to call in the industry, storyboarding um, the book? Yeah, uh, the, the first step would be for them to outline the entire book from the okay. first to the last chapter before they start writing. So okay. that gives them a finished product on, on, on at hand. So when they get into writing the process, they already see themselves at the conclusion. Now they can say, oh, wow, I have just about two chapters to go. And mm -hmm. one of the techniques, especially when you're helping someone, that we call it clearing the writer's block. If when they write a chapter, let them get it off their table. For instance, when you finish writing a chapter, get give it off to the person that's helping you. Right. And also very did. importantly, don't edit while you're writing. Don't go back to edit mistake. Right. First draft is when you write up to the end until you finish all the chapter before you can go back on, on editing. Thank you. That's that's how we did it. Um, he would do a chapter. He'd move on to the next chapter and give it to me, and um, I would take longer to review it than he took to write it. So yeah. <laughs> it was fun. And again, like I said, I wished I had heard this talk then because it would have helped me a lot. Yeah, it gives definitely gave you some structure. So any other questions? Or we've got about a couple minutes. We've got a new couple minutes for announcements. We I can take one more question. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Francis, again, uh, that was awesome talk. Let's give him another virtual hand here. I know it's not as rousing as, as you like, but 